Welcome to another edition of Top Science News, where we go over the top stories you've seen here the last few weeks. Let's get caught up starting at Jupiter, where new moons were discovered, two of them in a prograde orbit outside of the Galilean moons, and beyond that a retrograde grouping contains the majority of the new discoveries. The highlight was an oddball prograde orbiting moon out there in the retrograde distance. Valetudo will eventually hit another moon. Its name translates to Anything Goes. Splendid to see the electroquake concepts marching forward. Unlike the pre-seismic electron content and ground anomalies due to global electric circuit action, the up and down of Earth's electricity, this is about the resonance of the magnetic fields in the very low frequency range. Up next, we saw Woods Hole detail how melting Arctic ice can disrupt the Atlantic and bring major cold to the northern hemisphere, and perhaps the globe. It was just a few days later that we saw a study expressly tie Barents Sea ice loss to the potential for more cold intrusions into Siberia in winter, propping up the concept overall. Hopefully we all remember that the Beaufort Gyre is waiting to unleash its cold climate bomb of fresh water, and as signals are starting to show it's happening, we are just weeks away from their team's next expedition to confirm or deny the release. While we're on climate matters, it was excellent to see that the carbon fears for plant size and nutrition were as absurd as they sounded. Plants indeed do what the plankton were found to do last year, what every creature does when more food is around. They eat, and were far more nutritious under a high carbon atmosphere. Let's take a moment to see nova bubbles and dust caught in magnetic filaments as South Africa took their first look at the galactic center with their new super scope. The magnetic fields of the galaxy came into extreme focus as synchrotron emission and polarization allowed for some very interesting concepts to be expressed for the galactic structure. I'm also seeing some ancient concepts in there. Anyone else? In the battle between mainstream gravity and MOND, it has not been a stellar year for modified Newtonian dynamics. We've had three big experiments come back in favor of constant attraction across the cosmos instead of the changing structure over distance. However, mainstream cosmology has not been without its struggles, as usual. As Hubble put stronger constraints on its namesake constant, that constant became increasingly at odds with the picture of the early universe according to Planck. They just have to figure out how to fit a gorilla inside a thimble, and they'll be solid on that one. But they still won't have an answer for their dark energy problem, which got much larger this week as the Symmetron field was effectively ruled out. The effects they describe as being due to dark energy will have to find another explanation. Given that a no-show is all dark matter seekers ever find, they got creative and looked for oscillations that should exist if it's there. So maybe they can't find the particle, but they really did get intelligent and said, hey, let's go find the effects. They didn't find them either. And if you can't find the particles or their expected effects, it is time to rethink what you're looking for. Links below to the special videos we put out this month, including What Are Cosmic Rays? Learn about these galactic nuclei and their status as we enter the cosmic ray maximum of modern times. We saw it previously with the polar and low-latitude regions, and we now know it is holding for mid-latitude as well. Earth to Sky Calculus student group led by Dr. Tony Phillips demonstrating the trend across the entire United States. We took some time this month to remind everyone that clusters of planets all on one side of the sun is not what's important about planetary geometry. It happens every once in a while, like in the 90s and 80s, and is happening a few times in a five-year stretch here. Long-term solar and earthquake activity show no correlation with this weak gravitational cluster, but when we examine the electric alignments and interplanetary magnetic fields, it was a very different story. We also posted a best of high desert lightning so far in 2018. We do still have some storms due this season, so probably more is coming. Gorgeous display, so we reposted it at the end of this video here. Just keep watching. Below the video, you also have a link to the full Top Science News playlist. You can now catch up on months of the best material in just a few minutes. Enjoy the lightning. Hopefully, I'll be showing more in the coming days. We'll be back in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.